The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Texas State Bobcats have been road warriors in 2014 and look to continue that trend on a cold November night in Mobile, Alabama as they take on the South Alabama Jaguars with bowl applications on the line. This is what we've been working for. This is it. Every opportunity we get from this point forward is special. Trips right for Vaughn, takes a snap. And on the handoff again to the near side, Johnson is Running over to Fender. Boy, at the 40-yard line, ball is out at the 43, and the Bobcats have the football. That is just the third fumble recovery this season for Texas State, and Dylan Rosemont comes out with the ball. Four-man rush, Jones goes middle, pass caught by Miller for the first down. Got right by the defender down to the 30-yard line, move the sticks, Texas State. Jones out of the shotgun for the Jaguars, 16 and first down. Motion from Gunter. They're going to head it off to Franks, the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. Is he in? No sign yet. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the one-yard line. What a physical run there from Terrence Franks. So out of the timeout, here we go. First to go for the one. Jones with the handoff to Lowe. Darts up the right side into the end zone for the touchdown. Rob Lowe can run down the line of scrimmage, and then he has that vision, the ability to read the blocks, find the crease, and then he launches himself into pay dirt. On first down, Vaughn out of the shotgun, trips left against the blitz, takes a snap, he's gonna keep it at the 30 yard line. Vaughn lost the football on the ground at the 32. Bobcats say it's their football again. Two fumble recoveries all season for the Bobcats and they have their second in the first quarter tonight. So this is gonna be about a 40 yard attempt, snap, set down, kick is up, end over and kick for Johnson. Booms that one right between the pipes, it is good for his fifth field goal this year, and the Bobcats take a 10-0 lead. This is a short kick, end over in Glover from the four. Out to the 10, Glover running right to the 15-20, and the ball is out again, and the Bobcats have it again. At the 28-yard line, Chris Peterson comes up with a fumble. What a first quarter for the Bobcats and the bounces. So Johnson out for another field goal attempt. This is about a 37-yarder. Snap set down, the kick is up by Johnson. He missed it. Missed it wide to the right, no good. And the Bobcats, despite getting three first quarter turnovers, only have 10 points to show for it. Trips bunch to the right for Vaughn. One receiver left, that's Woodson. Vaughn throws in the flat pass, caught to the 35. Trick play, throw back to Vaughn to the 25. He's got blockers in room to the 15, to the 10, to the end zone for the touchdown. Motion from Mercer, Jones to throw, looks, throws, pass far side, caught by Carden, turns upfield, fighting for the first down, sticks, he's got it. At the Jaguar 46 yard line, brushed off two defenders to pick up the first down. First down, Jaguar 46, pistol for Jones, takes a snap, play fake, TJ stepping up, throws middle, pass caught to the 30, at the 20 yard line, Lawrence White will go into the end zone for the touchdown. 46 yard strike to Lawrence White, his third straight game with Pater. Well, we, we didn't cash in a couple times. So, you know, we missed two field goals, and we need to get touchdowns. If we, if we would uh, have been a little better between the uh, 30 and 45, we'd, we'd be a little bit better shape right now. Second goal for the dime, back to throw Vaughn. A jump ball to the back left corner, and reaching up to make the grab with a touchdown. What a catch from Woodson, right over the Astros' hands of David Mims. From the 17, option play, Jones rears back to throw. Has time, going near side, pass caught at the 25-30. Carden putting his head down, down the near sideline. Up to the 38, first down for the Bobcats at a gain of 21. Four wide for Jones, Jaguars rushing four. TJ steps up in the pocket. Jones throwing deep middle, pass caught by Smith. Turns upfield inside the Jaguar 40. First down to the USA 38 yard line. What a strike from Joe. First and goal for the eight. Vaughn out of the gun, two receivers tight either side. Handoff, Timmons left to the five to the end zone for the touchdown. It seems like a statistical impossibility to be plus three in turnovers into the situation the Bobcats are in right now. Trips right, one receiver to the short side left. Third and six 
and the Bobcat 38. Snap back to Vaughn. Here comes the blitz. Vaughn steps up, throws, pass intercepted by Mims down the sideline. 45 midfield on his feet to the 40. Still running, 30-yard line, tackle from behind, up to the Jaguar, 26-yard line, there are no flags, what a play by David Mims. I knew they were going to try to try to get a ride at the sticks, try to play it safe, get a first down and keep the clock going. I just kind of sat on it, I made a play, I'm, I'm, of course I wish I could have returned it for a touchdown, give our team the lead, but um, I did what I could with it, so. Third and eight for the 23. Here comes an all-out blitz. Jones throws. Rice and makes a catch. Lee reaching for the first down. Marking him out, and he's got it. Inside the 15-yard line. What a play. And now Johnson comes on for a field goal attempt. His fourth of the night. He's missed two. This from 30 yards. The snap set down. Kick by Johnson is up. And the kick is good. It is a four-point game. 421 left. Fourth quarter. One receiver left, give to Houston. Nope, kept it himself. And David Mims wraps him up for a loss. What a great play from Mims. Back of the 20, he'll lose three. 39 Jaguars, their own 24-yard line. Bobcats only rushing three. Vaughn steps up to run, and he's tackled from behind. What a play from McClarty. I mean, we just came out. We decided, hey, we can't allow, to, allow them to keep trying to drive the ball down the field on us. we got to make a big play to try to get it back in the game. Um, we produced, we had three takeaways in the first quarter. Um, so we just had to get our edge back that we had there. We kind of lost a little energy throughout the game and allowed them to come back. So we just had to get our edge back and make a few plays at the end to try to give us a chance to win. Fourth and nine, they're going to say, at the 48-yard line. Here's the blitz. Jones steps up. Jones looking, throwing downfield. Pass caught by Smith. Turns upfield for the first down and goes out of bounds. The Jaguar 32-yard line. What a play from the Alabama native. Yeah, I was just trying to do my job, trying to help us win, uh, catching the ball, looking the ball in, just trying to help us win as, as well as I can. Down to 15 seconds. Jones takes a snap, looks, throws, pass caught inside the five and down to the four-yard line with nine seconds to play. Second and goal, likely the game's final play. That's Brandon Smith in motion. Snap back to Jones, rolls out left, looking left. Jones got a throw to the end zone, pass incomplete. Eisers in the end zone, no flags. This football game is over. We've been working that play all week, and uh, they gave us kind of a different look to it. So it just didn't work to our to our advantage that time. We left a lot of opportunities on the table. And we, I believe they had four turnovers tonight, and we still lost the game. I mean, we we could have played way better than we did. We shot ourselves in the foot. We had a lot of penalties on offense that killed us and killed our momentum. So we're just gonna come back this week, try to execute better. Uh, we live in a one-play world in our in our uh, football team, and uh, we came up a play or two short tonight. And uh, South Alabama did a nice job. Um, I thought their quarterback played a lot better in the second half, and that was big for them. And um, hey, we still got down there and gave ourselves a chance to win the game. Just didn't quite get it done. The South Alabama Jaguars hold on to win a thriller to earn ball eligibility. The final score from Lat Peeble Stadium, South Alabama 24, Texas State 20. SWBC Mortgage, pre-qualify for your new home today. Find a branch near you at score.swbcmortgage.com. It's the $6.99 Pick Your Pears deal at Pizza Hut. Pick two medium pizzas and a total of four toppings for $6.99 each. Want two toppings on one and two on the other? Three and one? Get it however you want and on your favorite crust. Pan thin and crispy or hand toss, just $6.99 a pizza. Pizza Hut. I'm a third generation farmer here in the San Andrea Valley. My family was born to farm, and the rich soil here was made to grow some of the best organic produce in the world. Within minutes of being picked, our vegetables are cooled to preserve freshness, and then shipped daily to HEB. Our partnership with HEB is a strong one. We share the same passion for family, community, and sustainability. Not to mention awesome tasting organic vegetables. <laughs> I'm Tom, and this is your organic produce at low prices department at HEB. No store does more than my HEB. SWBC is with you to help plan for life's little adventures. We're here so you have one less thing to worry about. We can help turn a dream into a reality. 
and we let you focus on your business, not on business paperwork. Wherever you are in life, we're with you. At Texas State University, 35,546 accomplished Bobcats from all 50 states and 66 countries enjoy a beautiful hill country campus located in the Austin metropolitan area. We offer nearly 200 degrees, and our retention and graduation rates are among the highest in the state. Our faculty are world-class researchers in a variety of fields. And at our Star Research Park, we are developing the next generation of nanotechnology one atom at a time. Texas State University the rising star of Texas. It's the $6.99 Pick Your Pears deal at Pizza Hut. Pick two medium pizzas and a total of four toppings for $6.99 each. Want two toppings on one and two on the other? Three in one? Get it however you want and on your favorite crust. Pan thin and crispier hand toss. Just $6.99 a pizza. Pizza Hut. Okay, well, South Alabama, have you ever seen a team have so many close games, few plays? I don't believe I've ever had a season quite like this. And, uh, you know, I don't know what else to say about that one. Uh, I thought that the defense played well. You know, um, the coaches said we really had to work on uh, turnovers throughout the week, so that was one of the things that it was a, it was a point of emphasis. Um, we were able to get three, but you know, overall, um, it's a whole team effort, and we weren't able to get the win. It was a tough loss, but we're moving on to Arkansas State. I think we got good heart. I think uh, you know we have that never give up mindset. This uh, you know keep moving forward, the next play mindset. I think that bad things happen in football games, and I think us as a defense, I think we're mature enough to understand that you know we can still stop it, and we can still win. Just because they make a good play doesn't mean the game's over. We just got to keep playing. We've had so many close games and tight games this season. It's, it's uh, you know, Coach Fran always talks about don't flinch or, you know, don't give up. So uh, I think that we've just honestly believed in each other as a team and we're like, we're not going to lose this game and we'll do whatever we, we have to, to to win it if it's going to come down to the last couple seconds of the fourth quarter or even in overtime, uh, as you saw at Tulsa. But uh, I think that we just really believe that we're going to win some football games. So uh, if we can't get it done in regulation, we'll get it done in overtime. But so I guess just our uh, push and our drive in the fourth quarter has been uh, greater than any other quarter because we've let it come down to that, which we shouldn't. You know, I think one of the saddest things that ever happens at the end of the year for me as a coach uh, is, um, you know, in about 10 days, this team, unless it gets a postseason game, that it, it kind of dissolves. And uh, you're, you've been together for almost, you know, a long time, but for this year, since January, um, striving with together for a common goal, and you create some real feelings and bonds together. And um, you know, there's always guys as a coach. You're sad to see them all go. I think they're always, you know, just can't feel the same about every player, obviously. But uh, there's always a few that, you know, I'm, I don't want David Mayo to leave. You know, uh, and there's always a few like that, uh, but we're not the NFL. We're, we're college football, and that happens. And um, so you deal with it, and you move on. And as coaches, we're always thinking seven days, seven weeks, or seven months away. So we're we're always looking forward to the next challenge. And and so you you move on to the next guys. You never forget the guys that have given so much to what you've tried to do here. And kind of people they've been in this program. At Texas State University, 35,546 accomplished Bobcats from all 50 states and 66 countries enjoy a beautiful hill country campus located in the Austin metropolitan area. We offer nearly 200 degrees, and our retention and graduation rates are among the highest in the state. Our faculty are world-class researchers in a variety of fields. And at our Star Research Park, we are developing the next generation of nanotechnology one atom at a time. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
When I daydream, I don't think about PowerPoint charts. I daydream about football. It's such a beautiful game. It's this massive array of strategy, competitiveness, athleticism. So when you ask what a CEO does, drives performance, knows how to develop other people, and how to set standards, all three of those things come back to what I learned when I was playing football. I'm Jeff Himmel. I'm chairman and CEO of GE, and I'm a football player. As Arkansas State, um, short week, uh, but uh, good week. Um, you know, this is a good football team. They uh, they're 24 and five in their last 29 Sun Belt Conference games. That's pretty impressive. And um, you know, they want, they've been co-champions I think three years in a row. That got jolted a little bit last week maybe with the Appalachian State game for this year, but uh, I know they've had their share of injuries and things to work through, and it sounds like they'll get, we're always a good remedy for people to get healthy, and I think they get some of them back this week. Um, they've scored, prior to last week, they scored 40 points four weeks in a row, and last week they were off their game a little bit, they only got 32. So they were good on offense, good solid defensive team. Went to Lafayette and played them very well there. Um, so we know we got our hands full this week. You no, know, they're an up-tempo team, one of the fastest teams that we're going to play. They've got some great outside players. Their quarterback, he can pull it down and run it. Um, McKissick is a good player. You know, we're expecting him to be back on the field. Um, you know, they're a good team where it's going to be a good test for us. We're going to have to play up to their tempo and uh, have to be able to get some stops on defense. That's the best part about this season is that we get to see the same, the same teams we did last year. And uh, for me, you know, the best part about it is, you know, you, you get a feel for teams when you're watching them on film and you know how they play and you know how physical they are, but it's different when you actually feel it. You know, when you're out there on the, on the, on the field, again, you know how physical, you know how tough a team really is when you step on the field and you actually put your hands on them and you're hitting them and you're putting your shoulder pads on them. Um, that's been the great thing. So, you know, we know a lot better what we're getting into. Um, that's been great this season. You know, you play yourself into a position. And fortunately for us, we played ourselves into a position. And now they're all critical games uh, from here on out. I mean, that's just the way it is. And that's, that's the way you want it. You want to get to that position. Um, you know, and we just got to find a way now. Now it's going to be really emotional, you know. Uh, I think we're desperate for this win as a team, not as a, not in a panic way. Um, we're still confident, I think, uh, but we definitely have a sense of urgency when we're going to step on that field. And for me, you know, being my last home game and being the game that, you know, could be a huge deciding factor whether we go to a bowl game or not. Uh, this game is going to mean a lot to me. It's going to be the most important game of the season. At SWBC, we're driven by service. This takes hard work and an unwavering dedication to your success. We provide quality home mortgages 
insurance programs, and more for you and your business with one thing in mind, your financial goals. Because your win is our win. Make sure that you're taking care of your academics, talking to your teachers, and that you're taking care of your study hall so we don't have any issues with a short week. Everybody understand that? I don't want any issues, guys. You know, you know how I feel about that, okay? I really want you to pay attention on your, to your first steps so you're putting yourself in good position with your toes, all right? Whatever it is you're doing, overemphasize so there's no doubt in my mind that I know what you're doing. Does everybody understand that? Gabe. Wants to go on kickoff. Okay, so I'm just I'm doing what you're telling me to do. So, right? so then Brooks will go with the twos. Okay, so you're good. All right, I'll be there. I'll be over there though, just, just in case. case. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're cheetah fast. Get vertical on him. Good, Dominique. Good. No, okay, not bad. Not bad. Little less of that. Vertical. Lean into him now. Lean into him more. No, oh, you're messing around too much. Too much of that. Make one move and go. Get your hands up. Win the game with this play. Make sure we're being on sides. Helmet behind our hand. Helmet behind our hand. Hut! Hut! Good. Track his hip. Track the hip. Track the hip. Track the hip. Track the hip. Check the hip! Reverse, 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 reverse. Check that hip! Check the hip! Hut! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Get it down low! Get down low! Seek him! Seek him! Dallas, I'm gonna draw you offside right here. Red eye, red eye! Set, hut! Doom, doom, doom! Good! That way to come. Go, go, right there. Go. Good. Hey. Make sure you stay in your fit and don't get out of your fit. Make sure you make sure you don't get out of your fit too fast. He's got to declare. Wide it, wider, Jeff. Cock it. Cock it. Come on. Be an athlete. Come on. We're down. We're down. We're down. We're down. We're down. Boop. We're gone. We're out. We're out. We're out. We're out. We're out. We're out. on Facebook and Twitter. At Texas State University, 35,546 accomplished Bobcats from all 50 states and 66 countries enjoy a beautiful hill country campus located in the Austin metropolitan area. We offer nearly 200 degrees and our retention and graduation rates are among the highest in the state. Our faculty are world-class researchers in a variety of fields. And at our Star Research Park, we are developing the next generation of nanotechnology one atom at a time. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. How do you show your Bobcat pride? Now you can show it off and keep your money here at Texas State. Because whenever you buy at the University Bookstore at Texas State, that money stays here on campus. Apparel, books, gifts, and much more online or in the heart of Bobcat country, find it, get it, and keep it on campus. University Bookstore at Texas State, your bookstore.
Back at all in Texas State football. Brian Freeman here with you now previewing the Bobcats final home game of the season and joining us over the phone to talk about the Bobcats game this Thursday against Arkansas State is the radio voice of the Red Wolves, Matt Stoles. And Matt, looking at this A-State football team, 6-4 and four so far this season, but coming off that surprising loss to App State at home this past Saturday, 37-32. to 32. I know that Arkansas State has really hung its hat on defense in recent years. Just how surprising was it to see the Mountaineers move the ball the way that they did this past week? Well, it was very surprising. It was a game in which A-State felt very confident going in. They were coming off a big blowout win the week before, 45-10 to 10 over South Alabama. So maybe they were a little bit overconfident. I don't know. I think to a large degree, you have to credit Appalachian State because Scott Satterfield and that coaching staff really had uh, the Mountaineers prepared for that uh, for that ball game, Brant, and they came in and executed it perfectly. They dominated uh, the time of possession. Appalachian State had the football right around 42 minutes in that ball game, and A State didn't help themselves. They were 0 for 11 on third down Saturday, and Arkansas State did not play well, but uh, you, you also have to really tip your cap to Appalachian State and what they were able to do. Although Arkansas State struggled on defense last week, they still have some really good talent on defense, particularly linebacker Kushan Lee has been a stud this season and is up for Defensive Player of the Year honors in the Sunbelt Conference. What does he do to make this defense go for Arkansas State? Well, he's everything. He's the captain of the defense at that Mike linebacker position. He is uh, second in the conference in interceptions right now, has four of them on the season, and he's the preseason defensive player of the year for a reason. He's been uh, the defensive most valuable player of the Go Daddy Bowl in each of the last two seasons, and uh, Q Lee and the rest of the guys know they're going to have to step it up on Thursday night. The Sunbelt Conference has its share of dual threat quarterbacks, and certainly Freddie Dyton fits that mold for Arkansas State and has been one of the better dual threat QBs in the Sunbelt, close to 3,000 total yards of offense in his first year uh, as a starter for Arkansas State. Um, when you look at his play so far this season, what has impressed you through 10 games this year? Yeah, Freddie's a guy that is a true, uh, true dual threat guy. He's second in the league, uh, top 30 in the nation in total offense. You mentioned right around uh, 3,000 yards of total offense on the season now and uh, he's a guy that has been uh, extremely accurate uh, completing uh, about 62 percent of his passes this year he has not thrown me many interceptions at all I think four picks on the season yeah Freddie has turned into a, a big leader and he's a guy that can really hurt you uh, with his feet he has nine rushing touchdowns on the season uh, so he's a guy that uh, opposing defenses always have to keep an eye on. Certainly huge postseason implications on the line this Thursday when the Bobcats and Red Wolves meet at Bobcat Stadium and look back at the game a year ago. Very competitive, although Arkansas State very dominant in the second half in Jonesboro. What are your expectations for this Thursday when the Bobcats and Red Wolves take the field? Well, that was a good ball game last year. I think A-State fans certainly remember uh, Texas State coming in and, and giving the Red Wolves a, a very good ball game in Jonesboro. It was tied at the half, but A-State was able to uh, score all 17 points in the second half and win it 38-21. to 21. I think Michael Gordon was really the key in that ball game. Uh, he ended up with 184 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns, and we really need our running game to get going again this week. And really, uh, you have to be ready for anything uh, if you're this A-State offense because uh, th this is a, a talented Texas State defense that we're facing on Thursday night. And then, you know, we know that this is a much improved Texas State offense that we're facing as well that is one of the more improved offenses in the entire country this year. So I expect a good ball game. I know Texas State has played a lot of games that have gone down to the wire over the last several weeks uh, in particular. So I would expect nothing less come Thursday. Thanks, Matt. Looking forward to having you in San Marcos this Thursday. All right. Looking forward to it as well. And with that, we wrap up this week's edition of All In Texas State Football. I'm Brant Freeman reminding you to unleash your battle cry at 830 this Thursday when the Bobcats take on Arkansas State. Until then, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.